In this video, we're going to look at an application of buffers. And the key application of buffers is that they resist pH changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically set up a buffer. Um, and then we're going to look to see what happens when we add some HCl to the buffer. So uh, that, that's how we're going to set things up for this one. So it says a buffer is prepared by adding one mole of acetic acid and one mole of acetate to a one liter solution. pH for the uh, C, PK, uh, sorry, the Ka for the acetic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So before we get started on this, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick calculation to figure out where we are in terms of pH. So this is a pretty easy one to figure out. So we know from the last problem that the pH is equal to the pKa, so that if you take the negative log of the Ka for acetic acid, that's 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. And so uh, in this case, we have one mole of the conjugate base and we have one mole of the acid. So the buffer itself that we set up here, the pH is going to equal pKa because we have an equal amount of the, the acetic acid and the conjugate base. So that's, that's set up to, to look like this. That's set up to be like this uh, for a reason, and we're going to talk about what that reason is in just a second. So basically what we've done is we've made this nice acetate, acetic acid acetate buffer, and it's kind of sitting there. Now, let's take a look at what the effect of adding 0.1 moles of HCl to the solution uh, would be. So it says assume that you have one liter um, of volume, assume that you have uh, one liter of the solution um, and that the volume is staying the same. So uh, we're going to have a total volume of one liter at the end. Turns out that that's really not going to make any difference uh, for this particular calculation. But, um, you know, it just is basically saying that we, we, we can assume that we have one liter. Okay, so now what do we do with this 0.1 moles of HCl? So what we're going to have is we're going to have some HCl that gets added to the solution. And the question is going to be, what is that HCl going to react with? So HCl is a strong acid. And we have to think about what we have in solution. So in this particular solution, we have three things. We have acetic acid. We have acetate. And we have water. And so the question is, is when we add HCl, when we add a strong acid to this, which one of these three things is it going to react with? Well, what HCl is going to react with is it's going to react with the strongest base that's in the solution, right? So when we added the strong base, it reacted with the strongest acid that was present in the solution. It turns out that when we add a strong acid, it's going to seek out and find whatever is the strongest base in the solution. So it's not going to react with the acetic acid because that's already an acid. And so the question is, is it, going to, is it going to react with the acetate or is it going to react with the water? And the answer is it's going to act with, react with the acetate. The reason for that is because acetate is a weak base. And so by definition for a weak base, its basicity is stronger or greater than the water itself. That, that's what defines a weak base. So if you remember for weak bases, a weak base is greater than H2O but less than OH-. So when we put this acid in, it's going to react with CH3COO minus. And what it's going to do is it's going to give its proton over and it's going to make back some CH3COOH. And we're going to just be left with some Cl minus in solution. And the Cl minus is basically just a spectator. So you could write this as H plus plus CH3COO gives CH3COOH aqueous. That's fine too if you want to just write the net ionic. So that's our, that's our equation that's set up, and that, I'm basing that off of understanding what I'm putting into the solution. So it's really, really important at this point that you, you go through that process that I just went through. You know, we have a solution. We have to figure out what's in that solution. In this solution, we have acetic acid, acetate, um, and we have water. And then you got to figure out what you're putting in. What I'm putting in is HCl. That's a strong acid. So then I have to ask the question, what is that acid going to react with? Is it going to react with the acetic acid, the acetate, or the water? And then that's how you decide. So no matter what happens, when we add an acid, so if we add an acid, we know that the eventual solution of this is that the pH is going to have to go down. And that's going to make sense because what we're basically doing is we're converting, we're, we're, we're taking some A- minus and we're making HA. So what this is going to do is this is going to shift the balance to make more HA relative to the A-. minus. So our pH should go down at the end of this. So let's make sure that we're all on the same page with that now. And then when we get our answer at the end, that's going to make that hopefully will make sense. So let's set up our stoic table. So we've got one mole of the acetate. 
it says that up here, one mole of the sodium acetate. We have one mole of acetic acid. And um, in this case, we're adding in 0 0.1 moles of the HCl. So that's how I know what we've got. And so now we have to decide which one of these is going to be our limiting reagent. So the limiting reagent in this case is going to be our HCl. Because we have one mole of the acetate and we have one mole of the 0.1 mole of the HCl. So there's less HCl than there is acetate. So we're going to subtract this away and it's going to go away to zero. So we're going to have no more HCl left over. And that's really important because that is what makes this a buffer. We've added this strong acid to the solution, but because we have the acetic, the acetate in there, um, it reacts with that HCl and gets rid of it. And so that's what makes a buffer a buffer. If, for example, we were to have added hydroxide to this, then that would have reacted with the acetic acid and the acetic acid would have taken that hydroxide out. So whether you put a strong acid or a strong base in, um, the fact that we have both the, the weak acid and its conjugate base is gonna take care of those things and get rid of it. So that's gonna take it to zero. And this is another, this is something to think about too in terms of buffer capacity. Uh, in this case, we have one mole of the, the acetate and we have one mole of the acetic acid. So this can buffer about, you know, up to about half of that maybe. That might be a reasonable number or a little bit more. But, you know, if you put more acid in than you have uh, the weak acid or the conjugate base, you're going past the buffer capacity, right? So if I were to have put in two moles of HCl in this case, then we're, not, we're moving past the buffer capacity and this is no longer going to be a buffer. But in this case, we're adding just a small amount of HCl, so the buffer can easily handle that. We're within the buffer capacity. Okay, so this is going to take away a little bit. This is going to take away 0.1 moles of the acetate, giving us 0 0.9 moles of the acetate. So a little bit of that's going to get converted to the acetic acid. And because this is a product, we're going to add 0 0.1 moles of, of this. So we're going to get 1.1 moles of the uh, acetic acid on the other side. So we're basically converting a little bit of the A- minus to HA. So in this case, we get pH is equal to 4.77, which is the pKa, plus the log of 0 0.9 moles, which is the A- minus over 1.1 moles. And so when you do the math on this one, you're going to get 4.68. And so we've confirmed that the pH has gone down. So by adding this teeny little bit of acid to this, uh, by adding this, this strong acid to this, we've decreased the pH from 4.77 to 4.68, a relatively small um, change in the concentration. Now, let's, let's compare this. So the, what we're going to look at in Part B is what would be the pH change if we had just added this HCl to pure water? And this is really kind of an important thing because um, this is going to show you what the buffer actually does. So if we take 0.1 moles of HCl, which is going to, con remember, when you put HCl into just water, uh, this is going to give us, uh, so HCl plus water gives us directly H3O plus plus Cl minus. So if we put in 0.1 moles of HCl, this is directly going to give us 0.1 moles of H3O plus. So to get a pH here, I'm going to take my 0.1 moles of H3O plus, divide that by one liter, and this is going to give me my concentration of H3O plus which is going to equal 0 0.100 molar. And so if I take the negative log of that, my pH is going to equal 1. So with pure water, we start with a pH equal to 7. That's our pure water. And when we add the 0.1 moles, it goes from a pH of 7 to a pH of 1. So we're changing the concentration of OH minus, I'm sorry, of H3O plus by six orders of magnitude. We're going from a pH equals 7 to a pH equals 1. In the, on the other hand, when we, go f when we have the buffer, that same strong base that gets added changes the pH by just a, a few hundredths of a, of a pH unit. So this really demonstrates, this is part C, the effect of the buffer. So in a buffer, adding the strong acid, we go from 4.77 to 4.68. That's a very small change. In essence, if this was inside your body and you were to add this acid, that would not change it so much that it would kill your cells. On the other hand, in just pure water, that acid goes from a pH of 7 to a pH of, of uh, 1. 
And so that would be a massive change and that would be intolerable to your cells. And so this is why buffers are so important in biology because, you know, um, if you look at your stomach lining, for example, inside your stomach, the stomach juice is at quite a low pH. It's, a, it's in a pH of around one or two, depending on what's going on. But then you have the cells that kind of line that and they are okay. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, even though it's a very low pH, because of the way things are set up inside your stomach lining, um, not only do you have some protective layers, but because of the buffering ability of the cellular, um, the fluid the, the, that's inside the cells, they can kind of handle these uh, pH changes without necessarily having such large pH swings that it causes the cells to, to die. And so that's really why buffers are important. So now what you've seen is you've seen what happens when we add a strong base and what happens when we add a strong acid to a buffer. So you can handle that now using the stoic table.